Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. To the Redeemer, on thy throne of glory, lift we our weeping eyes in holy pleadings. Listen, O Jesus, to our supplications. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. O thou chief cornerstone, right hand of the Father, way of salvation, gate of life celestial, cleanse thou our sinful souls from all defilement. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. God, we implore thee, in thy glory seated, bow down and hearken to thy weeping children. Pity and pardon all our grievous trespasses. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. Sins oft committed, now we lay before thee. With true contrition, now no more we fail them. Grant us redeemer, loving absolution. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. Innocent captive, take an unresisting, falsely accused and for a sinner sentenced. Save us, we pray thee, Jesu, our Redeemer. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very warm welcome to this online service from St. Luke's and St. Chad's Skirton. Today we remember that our God is a God of difficult places. God searches us out, and finds us even in the wilderness in the most difficult places of our lives. Again and again he gathers us to him, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Our service today began with the Lent prose. It is now the season of Lent. This is a Gregorian chant which originated in Christian communities living in Muslim Spain in the 10th century. It allows us to meditate on what we have done wrong and the forgiveness promised to us through the story of Holy Week and Easter. Because we all make mistakes, fall short of the people that we could be, calling to mind those times when we have done what we should not have done, we ask God for his forgiveness. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgression in penitence and in faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies, 
cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. trust that God is present even in the wilderness and that here our sins are blotted out. Almighty God whose son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit and as you know our weakness so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, 
tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Even in the wilderness, there were angels. The beginning of Mark's Gospel is strange. It's abrupt and filled with silences. The evangelist makes no attempt to explain John's presence in the wilderness or Jesus' appearance before John. When we read Mark's account of Jesus' temptation, it's very different to the ones found in the other Gospels. The story, it seems, is just a fragment. There are no descriptions of how Jesus is tempted, no temples or hunger, just these few brief sentences. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. In the Old Testament, the wilderness was a place of punishment and emptiness. There was no water there, no fruit or growth. It was a place of hunger and thirst where it was difficult to survive, where the people wrote stories of desperation. England is an inhabited and cultivated country. There are few true wildernesses here. But even in this place of square lawns and brick walls and the hum of tarmac, we can find ourselves in the wilderness. We pass through places of fearfulness and loneliness. We travel through wasteland and emptiness. And strange though the idea of Satan might seem to us sensible and modern people as we are, he is here too. In the sin that spreads through families and generations, leaving sorrow and twisted lives. In the dark corners of our lives which we flinch away from looking too closely at. In the mistakes we make and quickly explain away. This story of a Middle Eastern desert is the story of our lives. Again and again the Bible returns to the wilderness. It understands the power of this place, knows that we see what the wilderness feels like, that the wilderness is a part of each one of us. Loneliness, grief, doubt, sin, regret. Jesus' baptism has revealed him to be God's beloved son, but he must still enter the wilderness. There he must find a place of believing that he is loved and important in this place of hunger and loneliness. As the memory of God's voice faded and the isolation of the wilderness played tricks on Jesus' heart and mind, he had to trust that his belovedness would still hold, that God's power is found in vulnerability and fear, as well as in glory and beauty. So we too can know Jesus shares our struggle. God loves us as his beloved children, even when life is almost impossibly difficult. For in the land of starvation and shadow, even in the place where the wild beasts roamed, God's angels lingered. Mark's account is significant because he omits any moment of decisive victory. So in a way, there's no end to Jesus' temptation. So therefore, like Moses and Elijah, Throughout the whole of Mark's Gospel, Jesus remains a man of the wilderness. So this is too where we can come face to face with Christ. In the midst of the wilderness of our lives, where there is darkness and grief, we turn in despair and realise that Jesus is there. Our God is a God of the difficult places. A God who searches out difficult places and difficult people and begins to transform them. Because for the Jewish people the wilderness was a place of hope, not just of struggle. It was here in the most unlikely of places that God's promise would be fulfilled. It was in the desert where God had chosen to draw close to his people. The prophet Hosea knew that it was in the wilderness that God's love would be understood in a new and different way. Look into the darkest place and God is there, patiently tending devastations, 
mending what is broken. The deserts of our lives will blossom and the rough places shall be made a plain. A host of angels flies through hard lives and difficult places. Their wings brush wildernesses, their songs echo through lonely dreams. Life is still hard, but we can know that healing and forgiveness are always possible, that there is nothing beyond God's love. For our God is a God of the difficult places, and it is here that God begins to transform the world. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. For even the wilderness is the Lord's. Everlasting God, your son Jesus Christ was tried and tempted by the devil. May we never be ashamed of temptation, but saved from the weakness of giving in. Help us choose the way of faithfulness rather than popularity, service rather than fame, and sacrifice rather than power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the whole family of your church here at St Luke's and St Chad's. May all your people be built up in faith and demonstrate in their lives the gospel of Jesus Christ especially as at this time we are struggling to meet together because of the pandemic. Help us to play our part in the life of the church throughout the world, through our prayers and by our gifts of money and service during this season of Lent and beyond. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you. Give us a fresh vision that leads to action and strengthen us to serve you in the places where we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for those in positions of authority and leadership, that they do not misuse their powers, but respect and care for all their peoples and for the natural resources of their countries. During our Lenten fasting, may we be constantly aware of those in our world who are always hungry and thirsty and of all those who have so little when we have so much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we ask you to protect our loved ones, our friends and our neighbours. We pray that this Lenten season may bring grace to our friends and relatives who no longer practise their faith, and that they may return in the certain knowledge of your loving acceptance of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are ill and in pain, longing to live full lives, for those who are sad and hurt, longing for comfort, for those in hospital awaiting treatment, for those convalescing, seeing an end to their suffering, and for those whose only relief will come through death. May we always offer gentle support to those in trouble, sensitive encouragement to those in need and strength and support to those in weakness. We especially pray for any suffering from coronavirus. We remember those who've requested our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those saddened by the death of someone close to them. Give them your comfort as they mourn for their loved ones and turn their darkness into light. We commend to your everlasting love and care those who have died, praying that they will rest eternal in the light of Christ. We thank you for the life and example of Jennifer Moore, former head teacher of St Luke's School. We pray for those whose lives she touched in her career and private life. We ask especially for your love and comfort to be as a blanket over her family and friends as they grieve, but also celebrate her life. We remember especially those who've recently departed or are on St Luke's and St Chad's anniversary list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, help us to see this time of Lent as an opportunity to develop our discipleship and discipline, and as your Son Jesus showed us how to react and reject temptation. Fill us with grace to be faithful to his example in this Lenten season and the years ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. through this season of Lent together, do continue to consider how you might observe Lent. How can you quieten your life so that you can listen better to God? Our Lent course continues on a Monday evening at seven o'clock. You are still very welcome to join us, so please do get in touch if you would like to. And a thank you to all those who over the previous weeks have volunteered their time and their talents either by posting our Lenten booklets or by contributing to our online services. It would be lovely to have even more people involved and more people represented from the various communities at both St Chad's and St Luke's. So if you think you could read a prayer, read a reading or contribute some music, please do get in touch. And so, as we begin this new week, a blessing for you all. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more 
more than any other, so much more than anything. You, are Lord, are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you.